Well, good morning. I didn't expect to be picking the camera up today, but I don't know if you've picked up on previous videos. I am a planner. I love to plan. And then some days it all goes out the window. The weather today was supposed to be rainy, windy, and basically everything except what you want to be working outside in. But as you can see, it's not. Total opposite. So, because I was looking for an excuse to ditch the housework I was supposed to be doing anyway, perfect excuse is that the weather is lovely to be getting on with gardening jobs. So right now I am working on getting the animals fed. That's what this is. So if anyone saw the poodle pony that we've got, this is his breakfast. It might look disgusting to us, but to him, he's absolutely loving it. The idea of this is that it's got more water than it needs in to make sure that he's staying hydrated. We're doing everything we can to keep getting water pumped into this pony anyway. So once all the animals are fed and done, and I've done my usual jobs that I have to get done, as in needs versus want, then we're gonna be in the garden all day long. Right, well that's the inside animals taken care of. I've got my chicken feed to take down to the chickens that are outside now because although we overwintered everything in the barn, as you know, some of them are starting to wait, make their way back outside though. The intention is not to put everything that's in the barn outside because when you're locking up on a night, it's easy to have everything in one place, of course. But now that the weather is hopefully warming up a little bit and the night, so it's a week tomorrow when the clocks change for us here um, in the UK anyway, and then we'll have lighter nights. So I'm gonna let the ducklings out, let the chickens out, and then we'll be getting on. So my plan today is these three beds here behind me, so there's no one near them now. Um, they've still got a few veggies in, as you know, and I was thinking about waiting until the Easter holidays, which is in a week's time to get to those. Sorry for the j jolting camera. Um, but it's gonna rain literally for, you know, it feels like forever after, after today and tomorrow. So I'm gonna get on with that today, emptying those beds, using those things, the vegetables that are coming out of those beds to make things with. Um, and then I'm gonna get some more compost delivered. I'm gonna get those topped up because I've got the carrots, parsnips, onions, everything needs putting in. I'm just heading over to do those last of the animals. Those ducklings are done now. And look at the green on these parsnips. Obviously this is last year's parsnips. Um, most people have got theirs out by now. And I thought the leeks might have plumped up a little bit, but this is what we're working with. So I've got, you can see where I've been taking them out, where the gaps are. So we've been using those quite a bit, um, but it's time for them all to come out today. Same here, the last of those sweets. Some of them have been munched, as I've said, um, by the resident mouse, but they're all coming out. They'll probably go to the sheep, but uh, the really small ones. And then finally, the last of the carrots. So the aim is to get all three of these beds completely empty and to make stuff with the veg that comes out of them. I think we might have a few problems with the wind today. It's really blustery and it's always a pain on the camera. The other thing that I needed to get done before I could get into the garden was make sure that everybody was going to be well fed at lunchtime. There's nothing worse than just starting your outside jobs and everybody coming to you saying, what can we have to eat? So I went back inside and really quickly got just a plain regular white loaf. It's a 400 gram white loaf of bread put into the bread maker and set that away. It takes about four hours, which gives me the perfect amount of time to be work, working outside to come back in and make some homemade soup from all of those veggies that we're just about to harvest. I've had to come in the shed to talk to you because it is so blustery out there. It's like really quiet one minute and the next minute you're getting blown off your feet. Um, it's not too cold out of the wind, but in the wind it is still really nippy. So anyway, I'm gonna be working on the parsnips first, then the carrots, because I'm wanting to make a carrot and parsnip soup for lunch. Um, I've put a bread in the bread maker, just because, you know, I'd love to be able to make bread by hand every day, but unfortunately, that's never gonna happen for, well, for a long time, shall we say. But I digress, let's crack on and get all of those parsnips harvested. In between doing the parsnips and carrots, I'll get the soup made, because we're gonna have that for lunch and then I'll come back out and get the leeks done. But before I get the leeks done, I need to nip over and get the topsoil ordered before he closes. Hopefully he'll get to deliver it today, but we'll see. It might be today, it might be next week. We'll have to wait and see. But that's the plan for now. So I'm not too sure how it's gonna work filming out there, but I'll show you at least some of the parsnips that we get up or, or digging them up because where's the fun if you can't get to see them actually coming out the ground? I love it. Um, 
well, so that we can actually use these. Get the topsoil on so that I can start planting in this bed again. Because as I put the fork in the ground here, that's now on the ground, the actual ground, the base of the bed. So these desperately need topping up. So I'll get these out, get them turned into something. And if you can hear me, there's some reasonable size ones here, some decent size to them. Um, some of them are suffering a bit, oops, some of them are suffering a little bit from canker. I'm going to have a look what I can do with the tops of them though, maybe that's just animal food. So the verdict is the sheep like the parsnip greens. Maybe not so much the roots, but that's okay because we want them. Time to do the carrots next. Um, for the parsnip greens, just on that, I need to get some parsley from the last of last year's parsley before it goes to seed. Um, and I'm going to dry some of the parsnip greens as well as the parsley, and then I'll just use that in stock and things like that. It's supposed to be quite peppery. Carrots with, with hairs. <laughs> Furry carrots. And that's okay. We'll just cut them off. There's a lot of nettles. Now this one I've been wondering about the day. Let's have a look. Oh, it's two. Oh, these are the multicolored. <laughs> Look at those. I'm getting some good, good specimens. Carrots at like the end of March. Talk about a wild gardening day. So this specimen, look at the hairs on that. That would put so many people off. You know, if you, you, you wouldn't buy that in the supermarket, would you? But that is one of the absolute joys of growing your own so the top on that is this is quite bushy so it may be a little bit excuse me it may be a little bit woody in in between but there'll be some good carrots still around the side of it to use for soups which is all i'm looking to use these carrots for uh, soups and stock to be clear um although once i get into them we'll see they might be even better for even more of some of the fresh stuff in the salads and things like that i'll let you know i've got the main rows of carrots that hadn't been touched all the rest of the bed here even though it's weedy as anything oh hang on sorry that's better for some reason the camera keeps going on to um cinematic mode which is blurs everything in the background but anyway um so yeah the rest of the bed is what we've been harvesting from there's about two and a half rows of carrots left that we hadn't touched at all all of the rest of the bed which was full of carrots has now been emptied over the last weeks and months um i'm going to get just enough for making the soup because that's my next priority that's if we don't have any soup then i've just got a lot of bread and some eggs food, which isn't a bad place to be let's be honest but i think there's a point where you get sick of certain things sorry the wind really picked up then yes yeah, so although we've got the eggs we want to have soup for lunch today eggs are for tomorrow far too much information i'm going to get on and get these scrubbed up as i say just enough to make the lunch for now because then after that i'll come back out i'll get all of the leaks out these swedes that are left here and then i want to get on and make these beds nice and weed free ready for all that topsoil coming and then we can get some more seeds in i decided to take in just a few of those carrots and a few of those parsnips to get this soup made for lunch and you can see i'm just very gently i've scrubbed the parsnips and the carrots and i'm just very gently peeling it with a vegetable peeler they turned out absolutely fantastic there was no complaints whatsoever the really hairy carrot it just the hairs came off really easy with the vegetable peeler in the summer when i get the carrots i just give them a wash and we eat the skins and all because all of those water soluble vitamins are in the skin and they get what sort of washed away or degraded once you start washing the the carrots etc but during the winter i always have to wash them because especially if it's not just the muck that's on them or the soil should i say it's these hairs as well which was making me giggle because the amount of hairs on these it was the yellow coloured carrots. It looks a little bit orange on the screen there. But interestingly, um, the white carrot had no hairs on it whatsoever nor did it have any of the carrot root fly and nor did these yellow carrots either so you can see just coming up here the standard 
orange carrots, had carrot root fly, but this is actually a carrot, not a parsnip that I'm peeling here. And just smelling it, just to double check, it had no root fly in it whatsoever. So that was quite interesting. Um, I was a little bit concerned that when I was taking the uh, chopping them up, taking the cut the tops off them, that they were going to be a bit woody. Now it might look as though they are there, but they weren't at all. They were absolutely fantastic. So I just got these chopped up as normal for the carrot and parsnip recipe that I've got. It didn't turn out quite as vibrant orange as it does when I'm using all standard coloured carrots, um, but it tasted absolutely amazing. I've actually got a video on it. It's one of my original videos, I think, which um, seems to do really well for some reason. Maybe people like soup videos, but that's what it turned out like. Homemade carrot and parsnip soup. The bread out of the bread maker is perfect every single time. I can never make it as perfect by hand. So I got that chopped up. Oh, don't forget to add the ground black pepper onto carrot parsnip soup. I think it's illegal not to. The yeah. bread sliced really nicely. It's only just come out. It's still steaming. I think you can see it there. It's just come out of the bread maker. And then, of course, with Stevens, he had to have a little bit of meat on the side. Well, Stephen's home and it's still really, really windy, as you can tell. I got two tonne um, of compost or topsoil ordered whilst he was at work. He's got one less in and has started barrowing that full, filled that bed and the two beds over there. You probably can't hear me too well, so let's just move somewhere else. Do you guys ever start a job? But before you do that job, there's another job that you need to get done. And then you think, oh, well, before I can do that, I need to do this. Well, that's what happened today. So I'm going to get the seeds in now. Um, the carrot seeds and I'm not sure if I'm going to do carrot and parsnip in this bed um, you know what it's like you make a plan and then it goes out the window but before I started doing that I needed to get something organized I went in to get the seeds and I thought this shed needs sorting out and I just sort the shed out I needed to move the table said table is now in here because I couldn't put the table in here because there was something here that needed you get the point okay sorry for going on but you get the point so right now it's um, early afternoon it's Sunday and I'm about ready to do what I thought I was going to get started doing about half past eight this morning. <laughs> but I'm really pleased because I've got a better working environment and you know what it's like if it's all cluttered and everything's all over the place, um, then you know it's it's not great. Your mind's a little bit chaotic, etc. So right now I'm going to go and grab all of the carrot seeds and we're going to work on this bed here, which is where Stephen put a lot of that compost that we got delivered yesterday. So let me show you what that looks like. So believe it or not, we've got some sun. So my plan is I'm going to put the broad beans that you guys saw the other week. They're going to go in this bottom section here, I think. Or maybe, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm coming without a plan. Maybe I'll put them up there. I'm going to make a decision. But regardless, you can see that this topsoil has now started to dry out because of the actual sun that we've got for a change. So it's still obviously damp underneath. Um, hopefully it's going to be good stuff because we're using it on all of the beds and we're going to get some more, I think. So in total, it'll be about six tonne that we're going to have needed. Those broad beans aren't all looking okay. Some of them are, so they can stay just for now. Maybe I'll interplant these between them. I think I might do that, actually. So anyway, this is the bed that's getting the carrots and potentially the parsnips. But I know that I've got quite a few different carrot varieties this year. So the greenhouse is looking tidy, but I've got all these pots out here, which honestly do need using or will be used, should I say. But what I've done in here, I've used these crates. So these are like the supermarket crates. What I've done is I've just stacked them so that I can put this spare greenhouse shelf. So this is what we've taken down in the greenhouse to make space for the tomatoes and things. Um, so I've just literally laid that on top of these uh, crates for now. And that's just given me a bit of a temporary table because obviously the table that I had in here was a lot longer. That's now in the greenhouse with all of the other bits and pieces on that you've just seen and it just means that I can get a little bit more organised in here whilst benefiting from the table in the greenhouse as well. As you can see, the seeds aren't in any particular order. I'm going to find all of the carrot seeds because this is what I needed to get done. I could not work in here whilst everything was all over. At least it's a little bit tidier now and then I can spend some time getting the seeds organised once I know that the carrots and the parsnips etc are in. The other thing I was going to mention is, do you know the kale that I've got in the greenhouse? At least I thought it was kale. I think it's purple sprouting broccoli now because either the kale is sprouting with purple flowers, which normally they don't look the, the colour that they've come up, or it's purple sprouting broccoli. But either way, I think you can eat kale flowers, can you? In fact, I know you can. I don't know if you can eat all varieties of kale flowers, though. So whether it's broccoli or not, we will be eating that. And then the leaves as well, so that when the greenhouse is ready, um, or needed rather, for the tomatoes and things, I can just take all of those out because if those kale plants aren't going to tolerate the heat that we're going to hopefully get, 
obviously there's onions and stuff in there as well but i can plant the tomatoes in between all of those so there shouldn't be too much trouble there but now that all of those beds are pretty much done as i say we may need another couple of ton of compost for the um where are we for these beds at the top here um, but I can work around that at the moment so now that the beds are pretty much ready it's time to go full on with the seeds with the plants with everything so some are going to be getting direct sown others I need to get them pricked out which you guys know all of that's happening in the next couple of hours fingers crossed now I can't remember for the life of me why I ordered what I did um, but I thought uh, well I do remember that a seed tape was on offer because normally I never buy seed tapes um, so this variety is Amsterdam Forcing 3 um, and then I've got auto, uh, sorry, Amstan Forcing 3 Sprint so I'm not sure about the difference between those but looking at these they can both be sown outdoors March to July outdoors january to july these were some freebies dt brown 10 to send freebies when you order from them so we'll get a row of those in and see what they're like another seed tape i've got autumn king too i do like the autumn kings they always do really well for me and then i've just got um seeds so autumn king carrot say, uh, carrot obviously they're all carrots autumn king um organics those not sure why i got those separately can't remember and then i've got the amsterdam force in here as well with these are last year's seeds and it says to get them sown by april 2024 so i'll be keeping my fingers crossed for those i've got a different f1 variety that seemed to have not been opened last year for some reason eskimo f1 i think they're probably more of a main crop i might sow those later on i'll do a bit of research before i do these are the early nonce too um i think i had an early nonce five is that such a thing that did really well last year but all of these are by 2024 so by 2024 and this is the two sean uh, these are by april 2024 so we'll see how last year's get on um i'll sow those separately after i've got all of these in first and then we'll go from there well this is the first for me i have never sown um seed tape before for anything i don't think i have anyway mind you my memory is dreadful so what i'm going to do i'm going to get these in it sounds as though these are going to be more of um fresh eating variety so the other ones the autumn king that i've got they are definitely for main crops so they'll be for my storage for my winter variety and the other one of these these are the amsterdam forcing um this variety yeah as i say it says it's a finger variety uh, so more for fresh eating in the summer or later or, or autumn i believe but the other one the sprint variety it says are for baby carrots and i don't know if i want to give my bed over to baby carrots i might do them in um in one of the tubs we'll see so i'm going to get these sewn this is it this is underway this is the first direct sewing of 2024 that is really exciting how nice is it to see the blue sky look at that absolutely fabulous i didn't see when i was saying about the free seed top weight is our australia's most popular variety of carrots so shout out to you guys in australia um i've done one two three rows of the amsterdam forcing three um don't know if i like carrot uh, carrot tape seed tape not sure if I like seed tape. It's a little bit fussy for me, um, a little bit too delicate for me and uh, feels a bit like I've got a tissue in my pocket at the moment because I've got a little bit extra. But, you know, we'll see. See how we get on. It might be the best the best carrots we've ever had, in which case then I shall do it again. If not, I'm going to stick with the, the loose seeds. Right, I'm going to get as many rows as I can. There's obviously, with it being a free seed, there's not tons of it. So I'm going to start off with one and see if we've got room for any more. Right, that's that. Just about done. I'm going to cover these um, seed tapes up. I've just left them so you can see what they're looking like. I th I'll give these a really good soak in now. Um, even though it's dry today, we are due rain all week long, um, but the temperatures aren't going to be too cold. So hopefully these will germinate okay. So I've got three rows of um, Autumn King 2 in. This little bit here is where I ran out of seed tape. I won't be doing the seed tape again. It's expensive. Well, let's see, let's reserve judgment until they arrive um, or until they germinate and uh, we start eating them. But you don't get much for your money is what I'm uh, is what I'm thinking. So I've run out for this little bit here. So I've done the uh, loose seed of the Autumn King too. So that's the organic seed in this bit here. We can compare. That'll be interesting to see. So all of this bed is carrots by this end bit. So there's nothing in this bit here. That's last year's parsley, which will eventually be going because that'll go to seed this year. Um, but all of the rest of this is carrots. I'm going to cover these up. I'm going to get them watered because I'm looking around and Stephen was over here just a moment ago, I think is about to wash the top of the greenhouse um 
a little bit hesitant on that though. We don't actually have one of those um, long um, extendable poles that you can use to wash them so that means he's going to be on top of step ladders and reaching with a brush and everything so um, I think he's going to use the jet wash actually so I'll just have to keep an eye on it and make sure that he's safe. That sounds like I'm mothering him. Well I am because he did fall off the scaffolding and break his back. Anyway, fingers crossed there won't be any accidents. We'll try and do it safely but I do think that we're going to have to invest in one of those extendable poles for the greenhouse because honestly what a difference it's made cleaning those windows um even just on the inside has made a huge difference but doing both of them it's you know you can actually see through them so i better get these watered before stephen needs the hose pipe well he beat me to it so i will get these watered once he's finished doing the, um, the greenhouse roof and, and outside. So what I've done, I had some water in my watering can, so I've just popped those broad beans in, just along from the broad beans that were already in. But I didn't realise I'm gonna be creating shade for the rest of the bed. I've been harping on about creating shade over here, and I've gone and done exactly that for this bed. I must admit, it's nice to see something in the ground, and I hope these survive any slug and snail attacks. These guys over here don't look um, that promising, obviously, as I say, they were overwintered in the greenhouse, probably we're in there a little bit too long, but all learning for this year. If I can get some seed, all of them are the same variety. They're all the super aquadulch or aquadulci, however you pronounce it. Um, so if I can get some seed off these, then I will definitely be sowing them in the autumn and just get them in the ground, probably um, at the end of the year rather than the beginning of the next year. I'll just have to see what the weather turns out like, but I do know now not to keep them in the cells for as long as I did. These ones are looking really healthy though that were sown. I think these are the 20th of January, if I remember rightly. Oh, actually, look, there you go. So yeah, they were the 20th of January. So looking really good. As I say, get the rest of that watered, but you can see already the shade here is from this pagoda. So I'm gonna probably be creating even more shade once these are up, but never mind. I'm sure it'll all work out. It doesn't really have a choice. Now this bed here is where I think I'll put the parsnips. It did have carrots in it last year, I'm not too worried about that. Um, but we do eat a heck of a lot of carrots and parsnips, so I would like at least half of the bed turned over to parsnips. Um, problem I've got is I've ran out of the topsoil, as you guys know, we need to get some more. But you can see the black membrane around the edge, that's where we would take it up to. And if I'm going to get the parsnips in today, then it's going to be on a shallower bed. And I don't really want to stunt them because obviously the shallower the bed, the sooner they'll hit the base of the floor. So I think what I might have to do is we'll get the topsoil delivered this week and then we'll just have to go from there and just get the parsnips in a bit later. Um, it'll still be it'll still be at March, it'll be the end of March, so they should be fine, I hope. What, what do you guys think? Right, so I think I'll leave the parsnips until next weekend, so it'll be by Good Friday, I would have said, when I'm doing the potatoes on Good Friday. All the potatoes looking really good. Um, I'm really pleased with them. Some of them are desperate to go in, actually, the rocket variety, the earlier variety. So I might get those in during the week. I'll let you know if I do. Um, but what I'm going to do now is get some of the, well, not some of the, all of the um, onion sets in that I've got. So I've got a few shallots and a few onion sets that I got at the gardening centre just as a backup to the onion seeds that I've got in just in case they don't work. And then we'll get some pricking out done. Now, I don't know if you can pick up on the camera, there are five huge bumblebees. Six, there's another one. Wow. Oh, that's so nice to see. Don't know if it'll zoom in, let's try. Right, I've got a few rows of onion sets in. I've got one row of shallots in and I've put a cheeky few shallots in between those broad beans that I'm not too sure are gonna work on. If I have to take the broad beans out, at least the shallots will be there. Next up, I'm thinking I'm gonna grab some rhubarb. This will be the first harvest of rhubarb this year. It's gotta be a crumble, hasn't it? Rhubarb crumble, oh my goodness, I even bought some custard. Having said that, I do want to try and make my own custard. Um, I think I've made it once before in my life because we've got an abundance of eggs, as you guys know. It's more about the time. And I don't know if I've mentioned, but I've got a couple of weeks off coming up. <laughs> so we will definitely be making it then. Look at this. Can't even get it all in the shop, there's that much. 
this is just that one plant because if you remember rightly oh there's a shadow again no complaints that means the sun's out guys the other rhubarb was here um and this was this was the one that took over every year so we said okay have it your way and we've moved its friend let's go and have a check on that actually um but first of all we'll grab some some of these wonderful stalks and have this one oh, so with rhubarb i'm sure everybody knows but you should always not do what i've just done <laughs> you need to twist them off and not snap them that's better that's perfect example that's not there we go absolutely perfect there we have it the first rhubarb of the year actually i want to check if there's any asparagus up just yet there isn't it's a little bit early still for that look at this so these are the other onions that have been in quite a while and we've obviously got the garlic I'm noticing one or two gaps in the garlic actually not many but that's fantastic and then more onions here but the rhubarb is at the end of here which I can easily walk down now because we obviously have taken all of the fence in the way that was there that doesn't look too bad it's very thin stalks which I expected because it's probably a little bit frustrated at being dug up and moved and I'm assuming I won't take any any harvest off this this year I'm not sure if that applies to um, once you've moved them you know when you get new plants then you should let them settle in I'm assuming I should do that for these guys this year as well we will see how they go because the plants that they came off were well established adult plants but as I say um, because the other rhubarb that we've just taken this off was so dominant it might not have been as well established as I thought so we might just leave that this year we'll just keep an eye on it it's not like I'm gonna run out of rhubarb I think we've got four or five six seven about eight plants now um love rhubarb look at this what grace has done so just here if i point with the rhubarb that's the comfrey coming through and then she's put a raw copying off what stephen's done who says they're not influenced by the parents hey um the raw of bricks and a nice little pathway so this is when um grace has lost uh, some of the lambs obviously people said but you raise your own lambs for self-sufficiency these are lambs that we're not expected to lose and she creates a little memorabilia for them all this was olive our little pygmy goat that we lost as well i'm sorry if that freaks people out but i think it's absolutely lovely and this here this is the cherry tree that was going to the dump our neighbor had finished with it needed it gone because he was putting some uh, building work where it was and it's budding really well look at that happy days and then seeing as though we're here more onions i'm feeling a bit better actually because i was thinking i wasn't going to have enough but hopefully i will <laughs> we use a lot of onions this bed here is waiting for the squash to go in but everything's looking really really well what i'm going to do now actually is um in between those carrot lines that i've just put in i'm going to get those radish in that are in the greenhouse they're ready just a bit, just little plug pants, pants, not pants, they're ready to go in. I'm just watering these in ever so slightly. I've got the radish in along the edges and then hopefully the rain that's due, so we do rain about nine o'clock in the morning, that'll keep everything else wet. You can see some of the water's pooling on the um, the topsoil that we've got there. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> that's where my feet were. I'll keep an eye on the drainage of this because I know sometimes the topsoil can be a bit clay so we'll see we'll amend it as needed but that's it for now that's that bed done ready for summer ready now one of the other things i want to get done today is get that parsley harvested so i've got two um parsley plants from last year and as i say they'll be running to seed this year so i'm going to get some um cut just now to take in and get dried i can use it fresh obviously as well um because the last of last year's dried parsley i've literally just finished it we had some lovely burgers the other night homemade and i used the last of it in there so i've got a big plant here um which there's no sign of it running to seed just yet but as soon as there's as soon as there's some more sun and uh, drier days i'm sure it will so i'm gonna get 
pretty much all of that harvested to dry um, I'll just hang it to dry I'm not going to put the dehydrator on for that but I've just been reading some of the comments I will get back to everybody um, I really appreciate all the comments by the way guys it, honestly it's really good to be able to interact with so many ideas that I get from them as well um, and it mentions about wild garlic and feeding it to the chickens what a fantastic idea you know the chickens can have garlic they can have the raw garlic that we grow they can have the dried garlic powdered etc like the horses but wild garlic, absolutely brilliant idea. So I'm going to be harvesting some of that. I'm not going to do it today because I will dry some of that out and I'll feed that. I'm going to make up kind of a dried nettle, um, garlic, all of those things that the horses can have and the, the livestock can have. And then I'll be adding that to the winter forage um, just as extra nutrients and things like that. But what a great idea. I was chuffed a bit with that. The wild garlic is pretty much taken over, so I'm not going to be worrying about harvesting too much of it and failing what we've got growing just here i've known an area that has got an absolute abundance of it not too far away so i think i'll be going and getting some cheeky cheeky bits of that too i've got a lot of those um brassicas pricked out i'll show you those in just a second but what do you think is this purple sprout and broccoli or is it a kale that's that's just flowering so obviously i mean the one here with the larger leaf so is that i think that's purple sprout and broccoli you know that's not i'm pretty sure it is what a bonus if that's the case because there's another one here very unexpected um this kale i know that this is obviously the black tuscan kale and that's what i would expect it to come up like if it was flowering which this one is obviously it's been um, a bit stressful for them in here in the heat it was all just a bit of an experiment and i will still eat these leaves i mean they're absolutely delicious look at them they're, they're looking fantastic and you can see these leaves are a slightly different a different shape to those ones which have got more of the the kind of the raggedy um edges Anyway, this kale here, um, I'll have the flowers out the middle, we'll still steam those, eat them. As long as those leaves aren't too bitter, we'll get those finished as well. This one here is done, and I know Mick in the comments is mentioning about these mushrooms. I just daren't eat them, I'm such a wuss. But this, this is them. So what do you think? Do they smell of anything? smell of mushrooms <laughs> I don't know let me know what you think I just I always worry where mushrooms concerned I absolutely love mushrooms I mean all that's in here is our own compost from the horses um, and bags of compost so shop-bought compost anyway let me know about the purple sprout and broccoli the blueberries are looking amazing if you look at these before I finally show you I will honestly I'll get there you've been watched off the cockerel um so these blueberries here look at them aren't they looking absolutely fantastic i think that i might leave these in the greenhouse this year because we'll probably get a better crop than than if they were outside in our fabulous fabulous british summer that's what i was trying to say yeah they're looking really good anyway questions questions let's go over here via the peppers which i've had to take the lid off for because these guys are getting so tall actually overshooting the top so these these are all next to be potted on um some of them as i say have dried out because you can see this one here just because of the water didn't get to them when i've watered it's been lifted it was resting on another pot it's been lifted off the floor so when i've submerged i've poured water in the bottom for them to soak the water up a couple of them didn't get any but that's okay there's plenty more there now i did say i would show you so in here i've just pricked out you can see they've just been watered so they're a little bit um a little bit falling over i'm frightened that this one is snapped but let's just pop you up for now anyway we've got portuguese cabbage and the one at the back there's portuguese cabbage cabbage as well the black tuscan starts here goes all the way down then we've got the red russian portuguese kale and i'm not sure if the kale and the cabbage are the same thing but we'll find out um the nero toscana didn't seem to be growing as quickly but i do grow plenty of that we use that um for the animal food as well and this here is the strong broly um which is absolutely fantastic so much so that i've done five extra um little pots of strong broly because i ran out of pots in this one now there's still plenty more to be pricking out these are the spinach this is madania and i've also got the perpetual spinach which is looking really good too but i'm thinking about putting these straight in the ground so what do you think rather than putting them into bigger pots 
maybe just put these straight in the ground. I've also got um, the Rose to Burn tomatoes and the, uh, what was it called? Bonnie something or other tomatoes, can't remember the full name. They are desperate to go into pots. So that is next on the list, but we're getting there. We're slowly getting there. I've also got the onions, the leeks, everything because it's um, that sun is lovely um, because otherwise I'm gonna miss the boat and not have time to get everything done. And then, I don't know if I mentioned, but I've got some time off and we will catch up on everything else then. For now, I think I need to go and get that rhubarb crumble made.